you know, I advocate mental health, and a lot of times I think people generalize that term a little too much. So what I mean is mental health can be a lot of different things. It doesn't have to just be a mental problem. A mental means anything that bothers you in your mind that affects you which don't seem normal to everyone else, or at least it don't seem normal to everybody else because people just don't like to talk about things like that. People would rather walk, walk around and tell you to the white lies all the time and uh, you know, okay each other that, yeah, man, you're right. I know exactly what you're talking about. I feel the same way. I agree with you. We rarely ever agree with each other when we say that. We, uh, I think we've lost touch with the fact that, you know, well, I'm not talking about hate, but anger, anger can be a good thing. It can um, bring creativity. Passion drive, um, fortitude to push on where we may have given up if it wasn't for the anger. And Friction, you know, friction is a a great thing. We, uh, I don't know why we see this as bad and try to avoid it. Because, well, take this for instance. You, you got a deforestation going on of a rainforest where they're, cutting down the trees for you know, to ship all the way across the world probably you know, <laughs> a truck going through the, the jungle first of all and, or an elephant pulling it out of there what, whatever it is and then it probably goes on a boat where it's slammed around and you know, the waves beating it back and forth the violent process, friction and Then you got a part of the world where people are mining coal uh, from the earth, you know, busting it and destroying it and putting it in dump trucks and shipping it to a factory. And another part of the world, you got hunters that are hunting elephants for their tusks. You know, this isn't quite as prevalent in today's time because, you know, well, at least in America, we stopped buying ivory legally. It still happens. But so you got these hunters that are hunting down living uh, majestic creatures who are, their numbers are dwindling, by the way. And a lot of them are born tuskless these days because of this process. So you're killing this animal for its ivory. So you go back to that that coal that's in the factory now. And it's heated to temperatures that you know, hot as the sun to turn it into metal. Then you got to shape this metal with different processes of, you know, again, molding it and, and changing its chemical makeup and structure. You got that wood that came out of that forest. It's now at a wood yard after a big ride on a truck after it got out the boat, and being beat around and potholes and Slam it against the metal on a pump wood truck or a logging truck, whatever it is. And now it's in a wood yard, like I said, and, and it's being, first of all, dried out and kilned through a kiln, which again is very high temperatures to get all the moisture out of the wood. 
and then it, it's slam around and, and going through a process where it's separated into different types, you know, the knots are good, the twos, I actually used to work in a wood yard. Then it goes through a planer, which shaves it and cuts it again, changing its entire form to be called what we call smooth, you know, like tabletop, smooth, like for a table. And that tusk that the hunters got has been shipped also. And it is now in a factory where it is being dibbied up or, or split up into pieces. All equal section, like gold bars almost. Well, that steel has been strung out in tunnels like spaghetti strings and shipped with that wood in those ivory blocks. And then through more violent processes of friction, that wood is warped to points that almost break it, but it settles into that warp like a broken bone healing the wrong way. It's not natural. And then those spaghetti noodle pieces of metal are stretched and pulled almost to their breaking point, such tension. And you take those ivory blocks and you attach them to those strings and the warped wood, and you put a few screws together, and what you should have is an abomination. What you have is a grand piano center stage at the opera, which is making sounds so angelic, so majestic, so melodic, that everyone in the opera house is crying and they don't even know why. From this beautiful sound, from this one of the most revered pieces of anything and, and, and oldest too that we have that we consider beautiful classic pricey or classy priceless kind of and it all came from all that friction all that death destruction chaos when uh when a baby's born, it's not exactly a smooth process. I mean, sex, it's, uh, <laughs> it can be very violent. Uh, <laughs> you got you know, organisms slamming into each other, and to, to some of it's painful, and you know, uh, they're warping each other as well. And, and that brings us life, which is, again, one of the most precious things we have, maybe the precious thing. And to make us, to begin with, however you want to say a creator or whatever, you know, stars had to explode into these supernovas and one of the most violent things in the universe, other than maybe a quasar, if that's like two stars or two black holes maybe. But and that stardust is what makes everything you see, everything we love. Us, we are that violent process. It's a, uh, you can't hide from the dark. Sing yang. Gotta have balance. Or there cannot be good without bad. There cannot be light without dark. If, I guess there could be, but it wouldn't be good. We wouldn't know what good was because we'd never experienced bad. So, this really don't mean anything. It's just um, 
pointing out something that most people don't think about. They're busy thinking about overthinking things, you know. Why can't we just like, like that door? We start talking about that door. Most people are going to be like, well, where did you get it? Who made it? What's it made of? What kind of screws are you in? Are they cheap? Are they... You know, all these questions that are kind of pointless. Why can't we just see it as a door? Keeps us warm. Keeps cold out. Heating in or vice versa. And you know, keeps you safe, protects you. The door, um, when you close the door in your bedroom, you can change and you know, have privacy. But people want to break it down to overthinking, overanalyzing. So, just wanted to share these things that I think about a lot. Uh, use it as you will. Much love, respect, mental health is real.